And we give you thanks this morning. We magnify your name. We ask that you bring illumination to your counsel. Bring fire from your words. Confirm your counsel this morning with signs, with wonders. And take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please make welcome somebody by your side. Tell them you're welcome to church this morning. God will not pass you by. He will fulfill his counsel on your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when you come to church, it is advisable for you to connect. Connect. Just don't, don't just come and occupy your seat and diminish at the end of the service. Exchange pleasantries, deposit a prophecy, encourage someone by your side. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Luke chapter 1. We've been considering the emphasis of kingdom tools and it's been a mighty blessing. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. We began a teaching yesterday. We saw the utensils that Jesus deployed in his ministry and I intend to build on that this morning. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all his commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. They, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both, they were both, now, well, stricken in years, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his cost, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And they appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of God, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. But many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Verse 17 is my emphasis, and I'd like us to look upon it with some form of gravity. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of a lion to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the church, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I, I'd like you to take inventory of the equipment that God made available to John the Baptist in keeping with the order of the spirit of Elijah. There's an equipment that this man was given to proclaim the kingdom and to extend the frontiers of the influence of God in the earth. The Bible says that he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. 
Now, if your Bible is not borrowed, I would like you to underline spirit and power. He shall go before him in the spirit and power in order for him to accomplish maximum impact and to fulfill the course of his witness he was endowed with a twofold scope of equipment for his assignment he shall go before him in the spirit and power of elijah now go with me to the book of uh, acts chapter 1 verse 8 when we get to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you will discover that it's the same equipment that each believer in the household of God has been equipped with. But ye shall receive power. How will the power come? After that this Holy Ghost is come upon you. So we have the Spirit will come first. And if you know how to deal with the Spirit properly, it will produce the power. So it's the same combination that John the Baptist was given, that every believer was given. Now, I'd like you to also take note of the consequence that is supposed to result if John the Baptist operates in full capacity in the equipment with which he was galvanized. There's a specific kind of weakness that you cannot bring into the earth if you don't have the kind of equipment that John the Baptist had to prosecute ministry. And God is expecting that the life of the believer is going to be supernatural on the account of the spiritual capital that God is making available in the person of the Holy Ghost in his enabling graces and power. If you are still with me, say, Amen. amen. Uh, as we said yesterday, the average believer... Uh, the, Jesus did not say that you will receive speaking in tongues after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Jesus said, you shall receive power. But unfortunately, the average believer <laughs> receives speaking in tongues. And that is not exactly what God intended for a believer because in the eyes of God, natural life is prosecuted supernaturally. And if there is no spiritual appendage to your life, you are not equipped to prosecute natural life. You are not equipped to function in the bank. You are not equipped to function in the, in the, in the, in, 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 uh, in the armed forces. You are not equipped to function in public service. Because if you get to public service and you, you, you are long on that path, you will encounter people that will be seeking advantage using diabolical means. If you have not experienced that, it means you have not traveled far enough in life. Then you will discover that when issues are orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, they need an answer that is directed from the realm of the spirit. And so Jesus, in, in, in attempting to calibrate us to come into conformity with understanding, he said, these signs will follow them that believe. And in the eyes of Jesus, you will need to have supernatural equipment in order for you to even fulfill the expectation of heaven concerning a believer. So God makes spiritual capital available in the person of the Holy Ghost. And he is hoping that that spiritual capital will translate to vital commodities required to prosecute life. Unfortunately, we have two queries on the account of this investment that God has made available to us. The first query is in the book of Luke chapter 9. Are you with me? Please turn your Bible. We'll do Bible study for um, 35 minutes. And after 35 minutes of Bible study, whether or not I finish the syllabus is inconsequential. After 35 minutes, we will now go to the practical side of my presentation. I, 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 I study as a scientist. And there is no theoretical principle, there is no theoretical um, 
postulation that you cannot support with a practical in the lab that uh, can amount to be a scientific principle. So the kingdom of God, according to the Bible, is not in words. So words are not sufficient to illustrate the reality that is captured in God's kingdom. In fact, Apostle Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, that the elements, the utensil that is used to illustrate kingdom matters is power. So, if all we have are words, we do not have the capacity to reveal our kingdom in its domineering dimension wherewith it has capacity to subdue the kingdom of darkness will be insufficient in our witness. And I'm going to show you the consequences of insufficient witness. Mm. I said we should open to the book of Luke chapter 9. We'll begin our reading from verse number 50. 51. There are two queries I'd like us to look at quickly. And we're not just querying it in scripture, we're querying it in the lives of men. That's the objective. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, we thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did. And he returned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Underline spirit. Because the first query here is spirit query. You know there are two utensils that we are equipped with. There are two. Um, are, you, are you still with me? You are not, you are not with me. Now, so what happens when you are not with me is that we, we cut the syllabus. It means you don't need it. All right, we'll proceed from that point. Um, you don't need that. Let's go, let's go to the second query. You know, I was a classroom teacher before I became a teacher in the house of God. And they trained us to communicate knowledge. We were trained in teacher training and all of that. And it's the same principle that is used in the teaching ministry. So we have our own, there's a teacher discernment capacity with which he can test the level of comprehension. Um, I just use one of the, What I did now is not discernment. It's the teacher training. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Let's try again. Um, Jesus, you know, he had fans in Samaria. But unfortunately for his fans in Samaria, Jesus had already picked that it was time for his ultimate ministry to be manifested, and his ultimate ministry was his sacrifice. And so he came at the border of Samaria, and the people got wind of the fact that he had come close to their territory. They had made his favorite room available. His favorite dish was being made ready in order to give him a treat But the burden upon his heart was so intense that his face was set to go to Jerusalem. So they came to him and said, will you spend the night? He said, no. What about the issue that we made available? Then eventually they said, okay, don't even come in. We are not interested. And, and, And John and James touched Jesus. I said, you've been teaching us about Elijah, how to invoke fire, how to release fire. 
We tried it once and twice and it, 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 it was effective. Is this not a conducive opportunity? This opportunity that has lent itself to us, is it not time for us to exercise the capacities in which we have been instructed? And Jesus did not only speak with his mouth, he first spoke with his face. The Bible says he turned, used his face to speak to them first before he rebuked them. And his rebuke was that they did not know what manner of spirits they are of. Um, have you read your Bible in the book of Acts chapter 6? The apostles, the apostle Peter said, we will give ourselves, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, to the ministry of the word and what? And prayer. Do you know what it means when we say, we will give ourselves? It's just like somebody that a shrine, a spirit of divination operating in a local village shrine picks. And say you are the one that is supposed to be the priest of the next generation. The moment that happens, the community will gladly separate that individual to be to be separated to that spirit. Are you with me? The implication of that is that the only way that that spirit can have presence, can have influence in that society. Is dependent 